Hare Krishna, it's me, Sun Man Patu, King of YouTube, with a very important message for the human race. Because my life has been Krishna eyes, like you know, Prabhupada always says, chant Krishna, and your life will become Krishna eyes. So my life has become Krishna eyes. I can't escape Krishna even if I wanted to. For example, I go to this little secluded spot, chant Hare Krishna all the time. Overlook Park, over there near, um, in East Elmhurst, near, near LaGuardia Airport. I go over there, chant, mind my business. And I know it's a little awkward for maybe the neighbors to see a guy walking around there with a bag on his hand chanting. I'm always chanting and uh, for some reason, like things, I pick up on stuff before it happens. Last night I'm over there chanting and a car came through. I said, wow, where's the police? I ain't seen the police, I know they coming. Yo, not as soon as that car drove off, another car came through. It was the police. They rolled up right on me while I'm chanting. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, how you doing? I said, how you doing, Officer Hari Krishna? You know, I greeted them with pranams. Uh, how you doing? You okay? I said, yeah, I'm okay. I'm chanting Hari Krishna. And I showed them the bag. I said, look, no funny business. I got a card in my bag if you want one. It's like, nah, nah, I just want to make sure you're okay. It's like the police always try to come and disturb me while I'm chanting or whatever, but they never get out of order because Krishna's Isha or the controller, so I'm good. I don't feel no threat from the police because I'm not a threat to them. Actually, if you want to be honest, if the police want to keep their jobs, they will want to try to eliminate the Hare Krishna movement because what's going to happen eventually is this holy name is going to spread so much and it's going to start saturating human society. As a matter of fact, the saturation has already begun and you can see the effects of the saturation when all of these people are waking up in so many different circles of life. So many people are becoming conscious. And what's going to happen to the police is they're going to have less and less work to do and they're going to start getting fired. So actually, the antithesis for the Illuminati is the Hare Krishna movement. Everything we teach is the exact opposite of the principles that the Illuminati uphold. The Illuminati, one of their principles are, are stated in the Georgia Guidestones. They want to reduce the population of the planet Earth to 100 million people or less because they feel that they could control things better. So where the police come in is the fact that they, they'll use the racist Ku Klux Klan Nazi Aryan tendencies of the police force that's just the outward manifestation of the bigger disease so really the police are not the problem the police are like you know when you have a boil on your skin and it's filled with pus pus is composed of white blood cells that are dead those white blood cells have already victoriously fought the battle inside your body against invading bacteria and invading species and now they're dead and they have to go somewhere so they collect on the uh, on the upper layer of the epidermis right under the topmost layer of skin when you see pus that means there's been a battle in your in your body the illuminati want to reduce the population of the planet earth so what do they do they use the police to kill a few black people here and there kill a few defenseless black women here and there you know just say she committed suicide and she was crazy she was high on weed and she i mean shoot some of our presidents have smoked weed our doctors, our lawyers, and judges have smoked weed, and none of them have uh, went to a jail cell and, and grabbed some hefty bags and hung themselves. This is just not common with marijuana. If you'll say they do this under prescription drugs, I'm more apt to believe that, or crystal meth, or, or even forms of cocaine, maybe, maybe heroin, but I've never seen people, uh, there's a lot of people in my area, they smoke weed, I've never seen them commit suicide after getting high, so I'm, I'm still confused about this Sarah Bland situation. But basically, the idea is to kill off enough black people till the black people get up in arms and we get angry and we start burning stuff. And then they have an excuse to come and just eliminate us and put the rest of us in concentration camps. And remember, social engineering always begins with black people. And then they experiment on us. They put the syphilis in us, the colleges, uh, what's that, Tuskegee experiment, look it up. They experiment on our people. To see how far they could go it's just like when you move on a block if you're a drug dealer you move on a block and everybody on your block is drug dealers well what you do is look for the strongest drug dealers and knock them off then it's easy to subdue all of the rest of the drug dealers on the block oh he yo 
Caprice is ill. He came here and he killed the illest crew. And now he's the king of the block. So this is kind of what's happening. Uh, the Illuminati is basically using the police to foment more racial strife and more racial hatreds. As if black people are not hated enough, they got to do more stuff. And I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just getting real crazy. But the purpose of this video is to let the people know that when it comes to education for our children, I think that we should teach them how to grow food. I think that when we have these senior trips and we're sending our kids to ranches and stuff like that, a dude ranch, we're wasting our children's precious time. We're wasting the opportunity to save the human family. What y'all should be doing on these senior trips is taking these kids to Africa. Take them to the Congo. Let them see these coltan mines in which 5.4 million human lives have been destroyed. Men, women, and mostly children. Children are forced to dig up coal tan with their bare hands in Africa. Nobody cares, of course, because they're Africans. Who, who gives a darn about Africans, right? So these African children, I mean, 5.4 million people. Let's, let's, let's put things in proper perspective. If you add up the total number of people who died in World War One, two, and you add up the Vietnam conflict, all of those people probably still don't add up to 5.4 million people. But in one country of Africa alone, for this mineral called coltan, so we could get these cell phones, 5.4 million people have died in the last decade. Nobody cares. Nobody gives a darn. Nobody gives a heck. But we should send our children to Africa so they could see these diamond mines that all these homo ass rappers is rapping about. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. So you and your shine and your glitter, you need to. To sign with Young Thug and, and what's his name on Birdman and all of them, they can facilitate your homosexual desires. But for the real rappers out there, for the real revolutionaries out there, you shouldn't be supporting the oil industry, you shouldn't be supporting the diamond industry, and you damn sure shouldn't be supporting the cell phone industry because the cell phone industry is killing your people, it's not killing their people. Take your kids to farms, let them learn how to grow food. I work at a reading program. The reading program is not to blame. We teach the children literacy, but we can't teach them human decency. That is not our duty. Our duty is just to teach your children to expose them to the worldwide economic system so that they could survive and be viable financial citizens. But when it comes to real training, when it comes to survival training, that's up to you, the parents. Take your kids to farms. Let them learn how to grow food. Resources are becoming more and more scarce on this planet. All parents, teach your children to stop wasting food. You work very hard to buy this applesauce, to buy these Lunchables, to buy these ham and cheese sandwiches. And they're just eating, they're taking one bite out of the apple and throwing it in the garbage. They're taking one spoon out of the spaghetti and throwing it all in the garbage. Meanwhile, there's kids in India and Africa, their school is under a bridge. Their chalkboard is a brick wall. You know what I'm saying? We have so many resources in America and we're wasting, and we're wasting, and we're wasting. And like I said, the food prices are going up in America. It's getting real hard. As a matter of fact, in Australia, it's hard to be a vegetarian because an avocado costs like five to seven dollars for one avocado. So we're very fortunate in America that we have a lot of food, but I fear that those days are quickly coming to an end. Everybody wants to raid the barn, but nobody wants to grow the corn. And that's a problem. So we don't have enough growers in America, and it will be massive starvation. I could see it. I could see the eating habits of Americans, and Americans are not used to fresh food. We're not even used to canned food. We're used to processed food and we're used to fast foods, high salt, high fat content, but low protein, low carb. Oh, it's high carb, but it's low protein, it's low mineral, it's low vitamin. So America's in, in real trouble because our children are zombies. And, and in case you don't know, when you take somebody off of a high fat diet, their body goes through withdrawals, which is why it's so hard when people first stop eating meat. They're like, I need some meat. They're craving actually for that high fat content that's in the food. And they start to go through withdrawals and it gets so painful that they just say, forget it. 
I'm going to McDonald's to have a hamburger. So I think that we should teach our children about carbon cycling. Carbon. Petroleum industry. Petroleum is the highest traded commodity on the planet Earth. Followed by coffee and then steel. In other words, people would rather have a cup of coffee than build an abode to live in. Carbon cycling is very, very important because we go to the store all the time. We'll go buy a juice. We'll go buy, I don't know, some bread, some nuts, some eggs, whatever we buying. We put it in a plastic bag. You get home, you take all of the products out, you put it in your fridge. And what do you do with the plastic bag? You throw it right in the garbage. The problem is it takes oil to produce plastic. It takes petroleum. So we are exacerbating our own problems by all of this massive amount of waste that we are producing in this country. Yo, it's, it's downright devilish. I've worked at the Marriott. I've worked in different food industries. I see tons of food wasted. And you know, this money system is so evil that a man will do anything to get a dollar. He'll accept a donation in the form of food from you and then go pretend to be sick so that he could get a lawsuit against you. So instead of Marriott or McDonald's giving away their good food, they throw it right in the dumpster. So America is the capital of waste. And it's not going to last. It's not sustainable. Teach your kids how to grow food. Teach them about carbon cycling. Teach them the impact of everything. These trees. What's going to happen when India becomes a middle class country? Upwards, actually India is about to overtake China in population. What's going to happen when 400 million people overnight want to build a house? We already know 50% of the oxygen on the planet Earth comes from the surface of the sea and the other 50% comes from the Amazon rain jungle, rainforest. And we're cutting down the Amazon rain jungle at a very, very, at an alarming rate. So people are cutting down the lungs of the planet Earth so that they could build houses. When India gets on the scene, and Brazil gets on the scene and China gets on the scene and they all become miniature Americas it's over for this planet I'll give us 50 years tops before we can't even breathe it's getting so so real and every time I see these kids wasting food I'm like what are their parents teaching them are they? and you know what's crazy is a lot of the parents in New York City are immigrants or they come from other countries and stuff where things are very hard and they're not passing on their values to their children. At least when I was a kid, my grandmother said, don't waste no food. We come from a poor background. She was poor when she was young and it was real hard. And she taught us the value of not wasting food. And that's where I get that from. You know, I carry my values with me through life. Y'all got to stop wasting food. Y'all got to stop wasting food. It's real. It's real bad out there. Let me gather my thoughts.